Hi, I'm now going to go through some of the main components of a computer. There'll be other videos which go into some of these in more detail. I'm going to focus on the CPU and the motherboard in this video, but let's first of all have a look at a typical, in this case, desktop computer and pick apart the main components inside it. So you might know already, you might have a look at this uh, fairly empty case and spot the main components. So let's start with a processor. So the processor is arguably the most important component, maybe apart from the power supply, you could argue. Um, but you need to have a processor to do any job, really. And the processor, you can't see it here. It's hidden under a fan. The fan is called a heatsink. It's because the processor gets quite warm, so the fan cools it down. But we'll have a look at that a bit later. The motherboard is this, it looks quite brown actually in this photo, this um, big rectangle slash square. This one's a very small one. There's a lot more space in this case for a bigger motherboard. But the motherboard will have some ports. The ports will be on the side poking out of the case. We've also got attached to the motherboard. I'm not sure, it's hard to tell if it's actually in here or not, but it would go here. We've got memory, specifically RAM. There'll also be ROM and cache, but you can't see those as easily. Uh, we've got a graphics card, that's not essential. You don't need to have a graphics card if your CPU has got graphics capability but we've got a graphics card plugged in here. Again, it'll have some ports poking out of the back of the case. Now the power supply is needed to get power to all of your components. It's quite important because, well, obviously, but it's quite important because it converts electricity from AC, alternating current, to DC, direct current. Your components can only use direct current, so it's quite important it can convert it to a form which your components can use. It'll also make sure it doesn't provide too much or too little, it will regulate it and only provide what is needed to the components. And it's down in the bottom left in this particular case. There's also storage, so in this example it's bottom right, it could be anywhere in the computer, but this is a hard drive, it could be an SSD, it could be an M2 drive, there are other versions of storage. Also at the top I've put it in brackets because I'm not sure you can't see it, so I'm not sure it's actually here. But you might have an optical drive at the top, which allows you to use CDs and DVDs and other types of optical storage. So those are some of the main components, some of which, like I said at the start, we'll go through in more detail in future videos. But let's, for now, start by looking at this processor in more detail. So the processor, as I think I said earlier, I called it the CPU, because the processor is also called the CPU. And CPU stands for Central processing unit. And what it looks like, typically, is one of these. So we've got both sides of a CPU being shown. Really a very small, square shaped object. On the bottom are loads of pins to enable it to plug in to the motherboard. On the top is just a circuit board, you can't really see too much. But the process is massively important because all it does is it manages the main functions and operations of the computer everything has to go through the CPU. So it's really, really important. You can't not have a CPU. You might have other processors in the computer, like a graphics card, for example, but the CPU is running the whole operation, so it's more important. There are quite a few characteristics of CPUs, so if you're going to buy one, there are quite a few factors to keep in mind. Here are three, so the clock speed, the number of cores, and the amount of cache. So um, let's look at a typical, I say typical CPU, quite a high-end CPU by Intel. You can see it's quite expensive because it's so important, usually the most expensive part of a computer, maybe minus a graphics card for really, really high-end computers. So looking at those three factors here, we can see this CPU has got eight cores. Now a core is really a mini processor within a processor. So if you've got eight cores, you are able to, in theory, do eight instructions per second. So the more cores, the more can be done at a time because you can do things in parallel. I also mentioned the clock speed. So when it says 3.60 gigahertz up to 4.90 gigahertz, that is the clock speed. So the clock speed is how fast the CPU can work to do one instruction. So again, the higher the clock speed, the better the CPU. And also cache, here we've got 12 megabytes. I'll mention cache in another video, but again, higher cache is good, it performs better.
This particular CPU has got graphics built in. It says Intel UHD graphics. That means you don't need to have a graphics card, although the graphics card may well be more powerful than this built-in graphics. And also, a final thing before we move on, is it says compatible only with motherboards based on Intel 300 series chipsets. That is quite important because the motherboard is the component which connects the components of your computer system. So really, it links everything else in the computer. And that advert saying that it's only compatible with a certain series of CPUs is important because there'll be a socket on the motherboard where you fit in the processor. And that socket will only work with a particular group of CPUs. So you've got to make sure your motherboard fits in, literally, with your CPU. And all components will go through the motherboard, but in particular on it, as you look at it in a fully built computer, you'll see the RAM and potentially ROM and the CPU are actually on it. It'll also have ports, so you can kind of see it in the top image on the side, but here is a front on view. The ports are what you'd plug in cables to, and the motherboard will provide a set of ports to use. Now, depending on which motherboard you get, there'll be different ports. You might have quite a few USB, you might only have a few, depending on how much it costs. There are different options available based on the motherboard you buy. We'll look at some types of ports in a future video.